Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a four-year-old named Kylie and I also have a two-year-old named Mia. Now, two weeks ago, I took you guys on a tour of my younger daughter Mia's updated Montessori toddler bedroom. And if you have not seen that video yet and you're interested in checking it out, then I will leave a link for you down below. But my older daughter, Kylie, I have actually done video tours of her bedroom in the past, but I have not done one since she was two years old and she just turned four. So she is no longer a toddler. She is officially a preschooler and preschoolers have very different needs than toddlers do. So from one busy parent to another, today I would like to take you on a tour of my Montessori preschoolers bedroom so that you can see exactly how it has changed over the last two years. Okay, so this is kind of like an overview of Kylie's room from one side all the way to the other. So this is Kylie's bed. It is an Ikea Cora bed that we are using in the bottom position only because it can also be turned into a bunk bed. Uh, but the reason she sleeps in this bed is because when she was a very tiny baby, about nine, 10 months old, she transitioned into this room, sleeping into a floor bed for the first time. And we actually hacked this bed to turn it into a floor bed. So you can actually see that it's raised up off the ground on a series of slats and so what we did was we just didn't install the slats at all and the mattress was able to sit directly on the floor inside of this little like frame right here that goes all the way around the bed and so she was able to get out through this little hole thing and it was a perfect floor bed setup for her because she was a very active sleeper and she would roll off of her mattress all the time and wake herself up and then not go back to sleep so this worked out perfectly for her earlier this year we actually decided to go ahead and raise it up off the floor the way it's supposed to be used now that she is capable of sleeping in her bed without rolling out of it. So she officially sleeps in a big girl bed. And then swinging over to this side of the room is Kylie's Montessori wardrobe. So this is the Sprout Alba wardrobe. I will link it below for you in case you're interested in checking it out. We've had it for about a year and a half, two years now, and we absolutely love it. It is actually quite a bit taller than the little Ikea hack wardrobe that we have in Mia's room next door. So this much better accommodates a taller child or a slightly older child. And I just did an entire tour video on how I have this whole thing organized and what's in all the little bins and stuff. So if you're interested in watching a more in-depth tour on the wardrobe itself, I will link that below as well. So I do try to keep things in the girls' rooms pretty minimal. So there's not much going on on top of the wardrobe. It's just her Hatch Rest Plus sound machine, which we also use as a nightlight. And then a little lamp, which she can reach the little cord and pull, but she doesn't because it's actually controlled remotely. There's a smart bulb inside of it. It connects via its own little Wi-Fi connection to this little switch right here and this button is the one that turns the light on and off and then the other buttons do other things but we don't use them so she knows just to press that one and it does come off the wall so it's a remote but she's really good about just leaving it on there and then next to the lamp I added this cute little art piece that I found on Etsy that I thought was really pretty and adds a little touch of beauty to her room along with this tiny little mini vase and a little single eucalyptus stem on this side of her wardrobe is her care of self station so it's just a little mirror that we mounted to the wall at her height with a little a couple of mirror clips here. And then there's a little shelf. This is one of the Ikea spice rack shelves that we just painted white. And she keeps a little hairbrush on it. And then a little bracelet that she actually got from one of our subscribers in the mail a couple months back. And she wears it all the time. It's got her name on it. So that stays there. And then if she wants to put on bows or anything, which she often does in the mornings, she comes right here to her little bow bin where she keeps all of them. And then on this side of her wardrobe, she has a pretty big bin of all of her stuffed animals. She has collected quite a few of them over the last couple of years. And she she loves each and every one of them and just cannot bear to part with them yet. So that is where they live. Although every night she will pick out a couple of her favorites like this dinosaur and she'll bring them over to her bed and sleep with them at night. Now this little corner of her room has always been like a little reading nook area, but there used to be a big old teepee tent in here that she used a lot when she was littler and not so much more recently. And I noticed that. So I went ahead and just took it out and we replaced it with this cute little cozy beanbag chair and then some artwork 
and then her books that she likes to read, like some of her favorites, are stored on this little shelf down here. This little cozy fluffy rug is something that's been in her room since she was a baby and she loves it. She loves to like just lay down on it while she's reading sometimes. And this beanbag chair is made by Big Joe. It's the same company that makes the giant beanbags that we have in our basement downstairs. And it's actually the adult size stack chair that they sell, but I think it's actually the perfect size for a child who's like at least four or five and up. Mia has one in her room next door that's like half the size of it that's meant for toddlers. And I think Kylie's just a little bit too big for those. So we opted to get the full size. And this cute little stuffed bear, it's super soft, was actually handmade by my Oma. So Kylie's great grandmother, she made it for her for Christmas just this past year. So super adorable. And then again, right here on this shelf is where she's keeping her current selection of bedtime stories. So we do have a whole bunch that she rotates through periodically. And these are just her current picks. So she's got Jack Goes to Montessori School, Look Inside Seas and Oceans. This is a really cute Osborne like educational book. And then a book of fairy tales. One of my other favorites that she loves to do, it's called Outside Your Window, A Book of Nature. It's got really beautiful illustrations for all the different seasons. And then this book that she just got for Christmas, which is a National Geographic kids book. On the shelf above it, she is storing her piggy bank. You can see right there, there's the hole in the back. So she does get an allowance each week, which I can talk about in another video. Very small allowance, but that is where she keeps her change from her allowance. And then up here right now, she's got her little music box that we got her for Valentine's Day. It sings the tune of You Are My Sunshine, which is the song that I've been singing to her every night since she was a baby. So this is a very sentimental object and she does like to play it every single night. It's so cute. Now, full disclaimer, this shelf is not always this neat and organized. Same thing with her bed. Typically, it's kind of a little bit more messy than this because she is a kid and we just kind of clean up every couple of days. But I did go ahead and reset it for this video for you guys so that you can kind of see like what it looks like when we do clean up and what ideally I would like for it to look like on a regular basis. But like I said, she's a kid. And actually she refers to this shelf as her favorite shelf. So periodically she'll build something that she's really proud of, like out of clay or Legos or magnet tiles or something that she doesn't want to like take down right away. And she'll come and she'll put it on the top part of that shelf or right in here next to her piggy bank. And she'll leave it there for a couple of days just to kind of look at it and admire her work before she actually takes it down. I do keep a baby monitor above her window. This is something that we installed when she was a baby, obviously. And she doesn't really need it in here anymore. She's pretty good. She sleeps through the night every night, but she does get nosebleeds sometimes and she'll get out of bed. So it's really nice to be able to see her and check on her if I need to at night. And it is plugged in down here to this outlet right here, which has a little safety cover box over it. It's the same one that we have in Mia's room. It's actually really difficult to get off. Like I'm not even going to try. It's that hard. So I don't ever have to worry about her accidentally somehow getting in there because it's like pff, almost adult proof. And then to this side of Kylie's bed, is her dollhouse that she's had for quite some time now. It's actually mounted to the wall so that it doesn't tip forward. And then next to it, we keep a little area just for her baby dolls. They're actually sleeping on a little miniature version of the sprout floor bed that my husband built for the babies. And then I made like a little mattress and a little pillow to go along with it but uh, that's where the babies sleep when they're not actively being played with. Now, truth be told, we don't do a ton of playing up here in this room. For the most part, the majority of the girls play happens downstairs or in the loft area out there. Um, but the dollhouse is here and the girls do play with it sometimes when they're in here, especially like in the mornings and stuff when everybody's still kind of waking up, they'll come in here either by themselves or together and they'll play in this area sometimes. Now, aside from these pieces of decor here, the only other thing that we really have in the room to core wise are these wall decals that we recently put up. They're a bunch of little like nude colored hearts, which I think are so cute. They're just little vinyl decals that we stuck on the wall. And then these puffball things have been up in her room since her birthday last year. They were actually part of the birthday decor because we did a rainbow themed birthday and Kylie liked these puffball things a lot. And she was like, I want to hang them up in my room. So they've been hanging up in here and she loves them. She actually told me recently that she likes to watch them move sometimes because the the vent is right there. So when the heat is on at night or the AC in the summer, she says that she likes to watch them rotate around as they're moving as she's falling asleep, which I think is really adorable. So the only part of the room I haven't shown you yet is in the closet. So let's take a look in there. And on this side, it's primarily storage, but there's some other things too. So 
Up top, I have like the boxes of some of the items like toys and things like that that I didn't wanna get rid of just yet in the event that we ever give them away or donate them or something. On this shelf is just the dust jackets from all of the girls' hardcover books. I would leave them on if it was just Kylie because she's really good about being gentle with her books and especially the dust jackets, but Mia is still a little bit rough and she rips things by accident sometimes. So we always just take them off and we store them up here. And then when the girls are a little older, then we'll put them all back on. Over here are just the extra slats from Kylie's bed if we were to turn it into a bug bed along with her headphones that she uses for her Yato sometimes, but realistically right now she's not very interested in using them. I thought she would be and we bought them for Christmas, but she's not really, so they're just up here for now. This is a giant box of little packs of white air dry clay that Mike found on a super deal like two years ago and we just keep it up here and periodically we'll pull a couple packs down for an art project. This bin is just a bin full of tiny parts of things that I worry about Mia finding and potentially putting in her mouth when I'm not looking. So these are things that Kylie can play with when I'm supervising. It's like a Hirsch like vet set has a lot of little pieces and then she has a light bright and things like that. And I also just don't want the pieces getting lost because they're just so small. So those stay in there and we play with those sometimes when I'm able to sit down and play with the girls. This is Kylie's first set of Bob books that she got like a year and a half ago for Christmas that Mia is very rough with. So they're up here again where she can't get them along with this really cool dinosaur pop-up book. Oh my gosh, let me show you guys this. Mike found this again on a crazy deal because these are usually so expensive and he was like, I have to get this for her. It's on super sale. But look at this, for any kid who loves dinosaurs, this book is seriously the coolest thing I've ever seen. But again, it's something that I worry about Mia potentially ripping pieces out of. And because it is such a nice book, we keep it up out of her reach where she can't get it unless I'm sitting down and monitoring to make sure that nothing is happening to all the little pop outs. And you guys know Kylie loves dinosaurs, so that's why we have it. I will be sure to link that down below because it is so cool. Right below it is Kylie's sleeping bag that she got for Christmas that she can actually reach to up to the side. So she pulls it out sometimes when she wants to use it. And then down here are just our kind of like spare collection of books that are not in rotation, either downstairs or out in the loft. But sometimes the girls do come in here and pull like a specific one that they're looking for off, which is fine with me. Other than that, the books kind of just stay here for storage. And then down here, I just have two bins, one filled with all of our like roads and vehicles. And then this one right here is just a couple of like spare backpacks and bags. And then on this side, not really a whole lot going on. This is what I refer to as Kylie's junk drawer. Basically anything that she's ever received that doesn't go with something else. It's like a random Happy Meal toy or something, or I don't even know, this is just, you know, odds and ends. So they just stay in there and she pulls things out of there periodically. This middle drawer is all like baby doll accessories. So when she's playing with her babies, she can easily come over here and get what she needs. And then down here, we keep a little pretend doctor set and her tea set. This is her laundry bin for dirty laundry. And then there's not a lot going on up here. Just some extra hangers, some old Halloween costumes, a bathing suit from last summer that I held on to because I'm not sure if it's gonna fit her this summer or not. And then some like mementos and other things that I've stored up there just for safekeeping. And that is about it. So that was Kylie's Montessori preschool bedroom tour as it looks today. If you are interested in seeing what her bedroom used to look like back when she was a toddler, I will leave a link to that video tour that we did back then in the description box down below for you to check out. If you are interested in learning more about Montessori at home or positive discipline parenting, I offer a couple of e-courses that walk you through it step-by-step. Step, so I'll be sure to leave a link to that as well in the description box down below. And just in case you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with our children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.